Let's go with the Mazda CX-60, European model, will be the CX-70 in the US with slight changes and their bigger brothers are the CX-80 for Europe and the CX-90 for the Northern American market then with a third seating row. This huge front grille blacked out here in that top trim and the Dayton running like very interesting horizontal here and then another one at the side and this very interesting color here is called platinum quartz and turning indicator check i think that looks pretty cool in the front already doesn't it the length here at 4 meters 75 or 187 inches the cx80 or cx90 in the us they are the longer models and for the third seating row and brand internally if you compare the cx5 that one is 17 centimeters or seven inches shorter but in this segment here they are actually preparing to fight against for example mercedes glc bmw x3 audi q5 lexus nx maybe even the lexus rx these here are 20 inch wheels in the black styling and we also have this huge inline six design element here at the side overall a very clean profile isn't it <whistles> auto fuel fake exhaust police alert because these fake tips, yeah, I think that was not really necessary, wasn't it? And turning in case in the rear, also very unique actually, but kind of tiny. Do you think that's visible enough? Now to the interior, the key fob is something they could still improve if you want to play with the premium guys indeed. And door closing sound. Yeah, that one also, yeah, that is still missing to give you know, a more more premium feedback from the door definitely but inside of the door actually is quite good because you have nice looking materials it's not too soft here but it has a structure then this insert here horizontal styling and also here the door handle and so on that looks actually quite good also these galvanized tips of the window levers like that and this is here a black trim today there's also a brighter one available if you like then when you sit down here steering wheel has a nice electric function here you can also very well grab that actually and also the design of the steering wheel looks really premium like and look at that really nice buttons with clicking sounds no hashtag capacitive bs that is one of the key advantages of this vehicle and with one is 89 or six foot two still needs a lot of headroom although this one is already the one with panoramic roof in details of the panoramic roof you have this slider here and then there's the shade and of course very important for really hot days here it goes all the way across the vehicle also nice bright headlining here in this one here and then we can open it it doesn't open too wide in length but it does in width and also very interesting detail here look at these door sills here in the lower part so they close then in a way that the lower part here is protected and always stays clean. Interior cockpit overview, wow, look at that. Completely new age for Mazda. Soft touch here and the leatherette style. That looks really amazing. Big button here for the hazard light and actually has a nice premium sound. Two times 12.3 inch, soon going to show you details of that. And once again, the design of the steel room is also really sporty and modern, but at the same time, buttons, 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 climate unit. Buttons, 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 buttons. Oh, so easy. Seat heating, seat cooling, a heated steering wheel. Wow. Well done, Mazda. Digital instruments. And here for the startup, you have a nice animation. Look at that. Very cool. So how everything is displayed is pretty cool. Also when you're driving, assistance systems and so on. And straightforward. At the same time, you have this analog view. And you can also get a very helpful head-up display. Infotainment system, now it gets really interesting. So when we're stationary and in the master internal system, it is not touch. I control it from below, which is fine because the menu structure is pretty easy. You also have a car internal GPS. It looks like this and maybe it's not top of the pops or something, but it is better than in any Mazda we've seen before, definitely. So because the infotainment system here is pretty easy to control i think i'm also totally fine with the lower setting and they do this for safety reasons however if i have now the apple carplay or android auto situation i have a cable connected at the moment but wireless is also possible then you can see a very nice and clear integration the the you know the quality of the screen is really good i can still control from below and i think that's also while driving more practical at the same time when you're stationary then it suddenly turns to a touch screen that is very interesting however if you drive then it's locked again 
also in the CarPlay. Just at rolling speed, it still works like this. But again, cool integration. And we have here the Bose sound system in here. And that is delivering us yeah, a very nice sound indeed. Camera system, here you see this drone view from above. This is also the camera looking to the front. When I switch to reverse gear, then I look to the back. For me, a premium vehicle is also supposed to have a soft, dampened glove box. Ah, yes. Okay, that box is also checked. Look at that middle console. It's huge indeed. So limits the space a little bit. But here, the sides here, left and right, are very soft. So it's no problem when you touch your knee against it. That's actually well thought out. Then here, there's the drive mode selector where you can go to sport mode and also with a nice, satisfying click clicking sound. And here, also very good how that resonates from the quality. Here also adaptive cup holders. This is the shifting lever and that's kind of a hit and miss I think because here you have to go then to the right in this stairs like thing. Reverse, neutral, D. I think too complicated and also it doesn't have an automatic going back function when I turn off the engine. It just stays like this and then requests to be put back manually before restarting the engine and then another time. Well done is once again this control selector here that you can do that while driving, so easier control of the infotainment while driving, also with hotkeys, GPS, back, home and music, and also a manual volume jog here. I love that. Split opening and here once again, great build quality. And then you have all the clutter underneath and two USB-C chargers. Let's take a look here at the rear. It's actually quite cool here also with the soft touch here on the top part that looks also amazing here also soft touch for your elbow and so on so very good build quality and look at that i mean here it's like a 90 degree opening for the door how cool is that if you think about getting child seats in and out there this is amazing and then when you take a look here the same look front seat and also in the rear seat and isofix at the outer parts each let's now get inside and well, this is like one dimension problem of the car is when I'm driving as a tall person, there is hardly any rear leg room. So this vehicle is not focusing on rear leg room and Mazda hasn't been that good in that respect. Um, headroom is also quite close. It works with 189 or 6 for 2, but my hair is already touching the seating. However, the seating position itself is quite okay. So the thing is, when you have tall drivers and then tall people behind it. Um, yeah, so for the Michael Jordan family, maybe not the most ideal thing. <laughs> and then on the middle parts, I kind of sit here. Yeah, that's fairly okay. Sit a little bit higher there, also works indeed. Um, yeah, but again, not the focus to have most space here. Here, this part, armrest, somewhat adaptive with these lips here. And in the middle part, we have a console with two USB-C chars and a real power socket and seat heating if you like. Let's take a look at the trunk or the boot, the electric hatch and then we have here an astonishing good width actually but first of all here look at that this cover here is attached at the higher part actually an intelligent solution because you have a free way then always here but at the same time visual protection and then here the width is actually one meters ten or 43 inches that's yeah, really um, segment leading, I would say. And then the length is a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches. Underneath here, there's, for example, sound equipment. But today it's about the inline six cylinder. First time we can drive it. And there's either the 3.3 liter diesel inline six cylinder with 200 horsepower rear drive, 250 horsepower and all wheel drive. But still then rear wheel bias this is a rear wheel driven platform. And for the petrol engines, really interesting. The US market for the CX-90 and the CX-70 gets a 3.3 liter turbo petrol engine, six cylinder, 280 horsepower. And in Europe, you'll get the 3.0, so 3.0 liter inline six cylinder with the Skyactiv X technology. So this is kind of like a compressor as well. So will more or less serve also as a turbo purpose, but supposed to be more fuel efficient. And acceleration figures, around eight and a half seconds for the rear wheel driven diesel, then some seven and a half seconds for the all wheel drive diesel and the petrol engines, some want seven seconds. 
This is focusing on being a luxury SUV, so it's okay when it's not the most agile one. However, I definitely feel a difference that here with the internal combustion engine, without the added battery, it is a way better drive. And acceleration test, slightly downhill. Stop. That's one kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. And now to some motorway driving here with the Mazda CX-60 six-cylinder. Noise insulation here at 120 kilometers an hour or like 70 miles an hour is good. It's reasonably silent and indeed it does deliver also the motorway. It does deliver you a premium driving experience. Steering wise here also really precise when I want to induce a lane change or something. There's no big dead zone area. Assistance systems. This one is equipped here with everything. So I have the adaptive cruise control and now I also activate the active lane keeping assist. Let's see how it performs. Here now a slight bend on the motorway. See here it's not that intrusive. So it's not doing too much that I would say like, hey, don't interfere too much with me or something. So, but here mastered this bend very well. You should compare the competitors or maybe if you're interested in the plug-in hybrid, we also have a video of this one here.